Hello. Yep. <laughs> I got the glove in the end. I know it's a week late, but yeah, got the glove in the end. Poundland. Bargain. Yes. So, and this, for those of you who missed my last week's video or haven't seen it yet, I was talking about Halloween last week and I was going to be dressing as Freddy Krueger and I did dress as Freddy Krueger for Halloween on Friday. People loved my costume, people went crazy for it, it was, you know, I was overwhelmed by the amount of compliments I got, so that was great. And my second costume, uh, for the, and yes, I'm going to reveal, because it was a, a surprise to most people, but I only did a few certain people, I dressed up as a zombie belly dancer. Um, it was a lot, that was a lot of fun. I had a really beautiful laced like jacket thing that tied up with sleeves that sort of, um, and um, a beautiful red skirt, my hip scarf and bangles and yeah, people loved that as well. So I was overwhelmed by people's compliments on my costumes. Um, the photos of my full outfit will pro hopefully be online soon from the clubs I went to because I did try and go hey in the foot in the photos and do the, this for Freddy you know I love this glove I really, I don't know why of how I kept yeah it did get a bit hot so how I kept this on the whole night I don't know but yeah Halloween was absolutely amazing and in some ways you know I got me when I was walking around London at I don't know on my way to this warehouse thing voodoo at say I think it was like half past nine something like that it did get me thinking as well that I think as well as you know getting to dress up as really cr batshit crazy characters um you and you know getting to have fun get get a bit drunk have fun with your friends all this that and the other and do lots and lots of sort of scary stuff um Halloween also marked this particularly this year um facing your worst fears um because Halloween is the time of year where you know thrills chills and spooks are at the height of the year people let's say people dress up as scary characters or people watch horror films at the, this time of year too and basically but we all have a laugh doing it and what was particularly important we uh particularly this year you know facing your worst fears was particularly it was um was sort of it it was i think yeah another thing is halloween is like facing your worst fears um which we all do need to do at some point you know um, I mean, we all have, you know, most of us, we all have such deep fears that none of us want to admit or none of us want to share either because you feel, either because we feel ashamed or we feel embarrassed. Um, like, um, there was a couple, I think the week of leading up to Halloween, there was a couple of fears I faced this week. Um, one of them, um, I'm better around them now, but when I was younger, I used to be absolutely terrified of dogs. I don't know what it is. Like, I think one thing, perhaps one biting me when I was very small didn't help. Um, so ever since then, I've been absolutely just sort of like, of like just terrified of dogs. Um, I'm better than I was a few years ago. I mean, a few years ago, if I saw a dog, if I was walking along the path and I saw a dog, I would walk the other way or cross the street so I wouldn't have to be near it. You know, it was it was so weird. It was really weird. But now I'll just pass one without even thinking about it. I mean, I still feel like, you know. I think the most nerve when I, I think I get most nervous when they start barking. I know that's what they do to say hello, to talk or tell you when they want something. But it's when they bark is when I get a bit jumpy and... On my way to work this week, on the way to the bus station, I could hear just a dog barking and barking and barking. 
I said like no I've got to get to the bus stop I was I sort of rooted to the spot I was nearly in tears because I didn't want to pass where because that's the thing when you don't know where it's coming from either and you that's more nerve-wracking and I was rooted to the spot and I'm like no Charlotte you've got to do this you've got to get to work you've got to get the bus to work so I put on some music actually and then just went through and then by then the dog stopped barking anyway you probably saw a cat it probably saw another dog you never know but I think yeah that was a good obstacle and um, so I think I'm not sure whether it's to do with having autism or whatever or having anxiety but social situations can sometimes terrify me particularly uh, when you're going somewhere on your own and I hadn't done that for quite some time particularly in a big city like London where you know where well it's a pretty safe place normally you know there's usually police around and there's you know if you've got a if you've got a heart of steel you'll pr think you're pretty much okay but I hadn't uh, say I was arranged to meet some friends there didn't want to go by myself but the more I waited, I'm thinking, no, I think I need to go because I, otherwise I'm just going to sit here worrying and that's not good. So I thought, even if I didn't know anybody there, and I know how huge voodoo is, you know. But luckily, what I love about the alternative scene is everyone's really friendly and people are very accepting. So if you start talking, they won't judge you. you they'll just... They'll, t they'll start, a if they think you're cool, they'll start talking with you and it's great. And that's what happened at Voodoo. I was waiting for some friends to arrive and there was, wasn't many people. I, well, was actually, I didn't know anyone at all. But once I start like dancing and then I think karaoke and then people, and because uh, actually I think when you're in costume as well, that's a great icebreaker. And people were complimenting on my Freddy Krueger outfit, and they'll go, "Oh, you look amazing! Oh, that looks that's a really cool costume." And it gets you talking, and it gets you sort of, you know, so in a so I overcame that today, which I overcame that this weekend in a social situation, which was that was a pretty big step. So. I've just remembered another, my prime example of overcoming a fear. Just after I passed my driving test, I had a little incident in a car park and it's just put me off trying to park in a busy car park since. I mean, I was trying to, yeah, I just can't do it. Well, I feel like I can't do it anyway. I think knowing deep down I could probably I can but it's that fear and anxiety that stops me from doing it like I will drive to the other end of the road to get a free space like if there's other spaces around it and over the past few years my confidence in driving's rocketed it's come back um I used to be terrified of it before um for reasons I won't go into um, because I don't know who watches this but if you want to find out then you can ask me I will tell you but I don't want to go into too much detail on camera because certain people were involved uh, there is not, nothing like an accident or anything like that it's just somebody who basically undermined my driving so who and he and they didn't even drive and they would they would get cross with me and the, they they basically they were i think that you know they were the worst backseat driver ever i mean making you doubt everything so yeah but it's only like over the past two years my co confidence in driving i mean i'll drive somewhere now without even thinking about it i mean like because this time i think this time two years ago, that wouldn't have been possible. I would have been terrified to do it. And I mean, I'm still sort of getting to grips with the parking in busy spaces. Uh, I mean, I did a couple of weekends ago and I felt like, yes, I nailed it. I got 
exactly. I sort of feel like a personal victory because I'm like, yes, I overcame a hurdle today and I'm happy and I'm hoping that I can do that in the future. I mean, I'm still nervous about parking in busy car parks, but um, I'm hoping getting, because if I can get my confidence back in driving, I'm hoping I can get my confidence into busy car parks. So, <laughs> there we go. So there we go. Um, so for me as well, as well as having fun, dressing up, watching films, having a laugh and drinking and getting to wear crazy little gizmos like this there, I'm watching you. I'm doing the rock horns with this. <laughs> it was pretty damn awesome. I mean, I <laughs> and maybe being able to, to give the middle finger as well with this is pretty amazing too. So yeah, getting to wear stuff like this, but also I think Halloween was also a great time to try and overcome your worst fears and face your fears, fears head on, take the ball by the horns. It's no good running from them. Just face them head on. You'll feel so much better once you've done it. I mean, even if you don't, if you don't get it first time round, at least you can say you've tried. That's all. Anyway, um, those of you who didn't see or have still need to watch my last week's video, um, I started doing a song of the week. Um, the last week was came from Hell Puppets. Uh, this one uh, came into my inbox yesterday. Um, it's by a band called Mindfield, and they're a hard, sort of like a rock band or like hardcore metalcore kind of thing from Poland. Um, I mean, normally I don't dig the hardcore or metalcore, but I'm starting to get to this stage now where I'm liking bands more than genres, you know, because it's, like, it's no good sort of saying oh, I just like this genre and that's it. It's like, well, hang on. It's like I start. I just like bands, not genres. But yeah, when I first heard this video, I listened to it when I got home from work today, and it's quite a cool sound. It's a very cool tune, really good guitar riffs written. It's just empowering and pounding, and it's it's just say it's a very good metal track. It's a great metal track. I still need to listen to their EP, and, and I'm hope and I'll post that as a review probably soon and yeah so if that video is anything to go by then I'm quite excited about this band already so fingers crossed here they are here's Minefield